Do you like beautiful desktop aesthetics? You do, right? And you must have tried multiple customization tricks by reading blogs, referring to YouTube videos and so on. But let me tell you, if you are someone interested in operating systems and customizing them, then you must try your hands on Linux. With Linux, you can customize almost every aspect of your desktop, starting from the size of icons, taskbar, visibility, switching animations and much more. But is this process challenging? Can you customize your own desktop without putting much effort into the process? Well, I would say yes, all thanks to the multiple Linux distros out there. And with today's video, we are going to talk about some of the best Linux distros out there. But before we begin, make sure to enable that subscribe button and bell icon so that you never miss any update coming from IntelliPath YouTube channel. First of all, we shall look into the agenda for this session. We'll begin this session by understanding what Linux distributions really stands for. Then, we'll glance through the history of Linux distros and then, finally, we'll discover top 5 Linux distributions for 2023. I hope I have made myself clear with the agenda. So without wasting any time, let's get started with the first topic. What is Linux distribution? Guys, generally in operating systems like Windows or Mac OS, each bit of code is combined internally and they release it as a single package. You'll have to choose from one of the versions they offer. But Linux is completely different from these operating systems. Linux is not entirely developed and managed by a single entity. It is basically the world's largest open source software which can be inspected, run, redistributed or modified by anyone or any organization. In most operating systems, only the individual, team or organization who generated the source code holds complete authority over it. This type of software is referred to as proprietary or closed source software. Only the original developers of proprietary software have the legal right to copy, inspect and modify it. And in order to use it, computer users must agree that they'll not do anything with the software that the software's authors have not expressly permitted. Microsoft Windows, Apple App Store and Adobe Photoshop are examples of this proprietary software which we majorly put to use. Open source software is unique. The authors or designers of these applications make the source code available to anybody who wants to read, copy, learn from it or redistribute it. The Linux operating system was released under GNU General Public License and hence the different parts of Linux are designed and developed by different organizations. What I mean by different parts here is that the core components of the operating system such as kernel, shell, utilities, X server, system environment, graphical program, etc. And the best thing here is that if you want, you can access the codes of all these different parts and assemble them yourself to sort of create your own operating system distribution. But it's not an easy task, considering you'll have to spend time in finding the source codes for these different parts and then sort of assemble them. From here on, distribution or Linux distros comes into picture. They assemble all these parts for us and give us compiled operating system of Linux to install and use. Now till the time you must have come across the statement that Linux is not an operating system, it's just a kernel. And well, that's not wrong. The kernel is the core of an operating system that actually interacts with the hardware. And to interact with the kernel, we make use of shells and applications. To make it even more clearer, let me provide you with one real life analogy. Think of operating system as a vehicle and kernel as an engine. You cannot drive an engine directly, right? Similarly, you cannot use the kernel directly. In this particular analogy, the concept of Linux distribution can be visualized as a vehicle manufacturer like Toyota or Ford that provides you ready to use cars just like Ubuntu or Fedora distributions provide you a ready to use operating system based on Linux kernel. I hope the basic notion of Linux distros is clear to all of you guys. Now moving forward, we will glance through the history of Linux distros. Let's go back in time to 1969 when two crazy people Kane Thompson and Dennis Ritchie started developing the Unix operating system. At that time, Unix was well loved by both businesses and universities. There was one problem though, 
The whole code was owned by AT&T and in 1977 when UC Berkeley created their own Berkeley software distribution, AT&T sued them that put the limitation on Unix development and led to a period known as Unix Wars. A few years down the line, later in 1983, Richard Stallman created a GNU project which was intended to be a free and open replacement for Unix. But Unix was a big complex project with hundreds of different applications and replacing it was no easy task. Over the next few years, the project recreated many applications that you know and might love today. Tools that are synonymously used often with Linux like Tar, Bash, Emacs, just to name a few. By the early 90s, JNU had all the great software, but it was missing one important component, the operating system kernel. A complete operating system need a kernel to sit in between the hardware and the software, where it can allocate resources such as CPU, memory, etc. to run software applications. Luckily, it was right around this time Linus Toadwall was working on his hobby operating system. Originally, it was going to be called Free Acts because the name Linux was too egotistical, but the admin kept it as it is without informing Linus Toadwall. In 1992, this OS was released under the GNU General Public License and this gave birth to the complete operating system, GNU plus Linux. The beauty of the Linux kernel is that it gave developers the ability to build custom operating systems that felt like Unix but didn't come with the fear of being sued down the road. Ultimately, this led to some of the first Linux distributions like soft landing, stackware, etc. These Linux distros were the complete operating systems based on the Linux kernel that contains a bunch of packages and libraries, and typically a package manager to install additional applications and possibly a Windows system if there is GUI involved. Many distros share the default user interface, and the popular user interfaces when it comes to Linux are Genome, KDE Plasma, Metsynamon, and bunch of others. Today, there are thousands of Linux distros out there and they have all been customized to serve different purposes. Some of them are only running on servers. Some are just for selected set of users. Some are for general population running this OS on mobile, desktop and embedded systems. Such distros, every distro is backed by a community that has its own set of philosophical and technical opinions. Most of the early days distros are no longer maintained and are just considered as historical artifacts. Not only that, as we are seeing in this graph, Linux distros space is heavily fragmented to the point that a new distribution is being created almost every day. A very few of them are unique and bring something different to the table. Most of them are just the same Ubuntu or Debian based with the different theme or a wrapper. Furthermore, the distro landscape is so dynamic that it changes every month. Some Linux distributions become more stable with ever-changing packages and components, while others become unstable in quality. Hence, it's challenging to pick and choose the best Linux distribution for your school, work or for just casual browsing, watching movies, etc. Not to mention, many Linux distributions are discontinued every year due to lack of contributions, cost overrun and other reasons. That being said, let me tell you about the top 5 Linux distributions for 2023 which are perfect for any user or any use case. On number 5, I have Pop OS. System76, an American computer firm, created the Pop OS for their hardware lineup. However, it is one of the most well-known and rising Linux variants based on Ubuntu. The Pop OS is most renowned for being optimized for contemporary hardware including NVIDIA graphics and for bringing several unique features not seen in the regular Ubuntu with Genome desktop. For example, you get well-designed cosmic desktop with Pop OS, built-in tilting features, well-optimized power controls and a stunning Pop Shop. The Pop Shop is a software store designed by its maker to give you a well-categorized set of applications for your study, learning, development, gaming, etc. This distribution is also perfect for gaming if you plan to start your Linux journey with gaming in mind. 
In addition, if you want to get a professional grade Linux distribution with official help and support, you should check out actual System76 hardware with Pop OS. It is one of the supreme products out there in the market. Next up, we have Linux Mint Cinnamon at 4. One of the Linux distributions that simply works in any sort of hardware has to be Linux Mint. This operating system can be run smoothly on any older hardware, PC or laptop with little RAM and an older CPU. Furthermore, with Linux Mint, furthermore with Linux Mint, you do not need to install any additional applications after a fresh install. It comes with every possible driver and utility for all use cases. For example, your printer, webcam and Bluetooth would work in Linux Mint. In addition, if you are new to Linux or Windows user who plan to migrate, then it is perfect distribution to start. Its legacy menu driven Cinnamon desktop is one of the best open source desktops today. I mean, I would say if you are confused or don't have time to decide which distribution is ideal for you, go ahead with the Linux Mint Cinnamon. Then at number 3, we have the Ubuntu LTS release with Genome. The Ubuntu LTS release is the most popular, most downloaded and used operating system software. There is no debate about the strength and stability of Ubuntu LTS version. It has been time tested with a large community of support. Ubuntu LTS editions with the customized genome may be the ideal fit for your requirements. Most third party apps and games are primarily aimed for Ubuntu giving you a considerably larger support base than any other distribution on our list. However, recent canonical initiatives such as pressuring users to embrace Snap and other things may cause you anxiety if you are an expert user. However, for casual users who wish to surf the internet, view movies, listen to music and conduct personal work, Ubuntu LTS editions are the finest Linux distributions to use. Then for second rank, we have KDE Neon. The KDE Neon is based on the Ubuntu LTS release at its base. But the KDE framework and KDE applications with KDE Plasma desktop are the latest from the team. The primary reason for featuring this is that it is perfect for you if you want a Ubuntu LTS based distribution but want the latest KDE applications. In fact, you can use it for your daily driver for years to come, provided you keep your system up to date. In contrast, the Kubuntu LTS release are also perfect, but they may not have the latest KDE framework or applications. The first Linux distribution which I think deserves the crown is Fedora Linux KDE edition. The primary reason is that the Fedora Linux is very stable with the latest tech and KDE Plasma is super fast and perfect for all users. Moreover, this Fedora and KDE Plasma combination doesn't require further modification or tweaks after installation. Over the last couple of releases and after the latest Fedora 36 release feedback, Fedora Linux with KDE Plasma has become the go-to distribution for every possible use case and workflow. You may also rely on Fedora Linux with KDE Edition as your daily vehicle thanks to the Fedora repo and RPM Fusion. If you prefer Genome style desktop, you may alternatively try the Fedora Linux workstation version with Genome. Or if you prefer a different desktop flavor, you might also look into other Fedora spins or Fedora labs. That's all we have for this session. I wish you the best of luck in creating amazing Linux desktop using the above mentioned distros. Thank you for being here till the end of this session. If you have liked this video, make sure to hit that like button and also consider subscribing to our YouTube channel to come across more technical updates like this. Just a quick info guys. IntelliPart offers advanced certification in DevOps and cloud computing in collaboration with IIT M. Pravartha, a technology innovation hub of IIT Madras. This online advanced certification in DevOps and cloud computing by IIT M. Pravartha will help you gain expertise in DevOps, access management, DevSecOps, Terraform, and more. With this course, we have already helped thousands of professionals in successful career transition. You can check out their testimonials on our Achievers channel. The link is given in the description below. Without a doubt, this course can set your career to new heights. So visit the course page link given in the description below 
and take your first step towards career growth in the field of cloud and DevOps.